Hi, everyone. Welcome. We'll wait a few minutes so that everyone can log in on. But thank you for coming today. We'll begin in just a few minutes. All right. It is 3.31, so I think it's time, good time to start. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today and for your interest in this California Sea Grant and Ocean Protection Council Microplastic Research Program funding opportunity. My name is Tanya Torres, and I am the Marine Debris Research Associate for California Sea Grant based out of San Diego, and I'll be running today's webinar. I'm also joined today by the Ocean Protection Council's Water Quality Program Manager, Caitlin Kalua, as well as our California Sea Grant Director, Shauna O, oh, our Assistant Director, Rose Madsen, um, who all three of them will be here to uh, help answer any specific questions you have. And then I also have my wonderful team members, uh, Leon Guo and Madeline Wongler, who will be here to provide technical assistance and monitor the Q&A. Um, with that, we've got some webinar guidelines. Um, all of you are automatically muted um, during this presentation, but we would ask if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, and there, we are recording and there will be a recording made available to you um, on our request for proposal website, um, which um, will be made available in the, in the next couple of days. And so please note that the information in this presentation is accurate as of March 7th today. Um, however, the timeline and the details can change and any updates will be reflected on the website. So we urge everyone to refer to the RFP itself when preparing your applications. Um, and I'll have Madeline drop the link for you um, of our website and the RFP uh, in the chat. So our objectives today are to describe in detail the requests for proposal, go over important application components, and have you know, answer any of your questions, and then um, we'll have a little how to apply segment um, through our ECGRAM online portal. All right, so first I will provide a little background on the Grant program. Uh, California Sea Grant's mission is to provide the information, tools, training, and relationships needed to help California conserve and sustainably prosper from our coastal and marine environments. And we do this by providing grants and funding to the larger marine and coastal research community in California. We also provide fellowships to train and mentor the next generation of coastal researchers and managers. And we prioritize working with and for communities through our extension programs and communications and outreach. And so to learn more about our program and other funding opportunities, you can always visit our website. Um, partnering with us on this RFP is the Ocean Protection Council, which is a cabinet level body established to improve the management and protection of ocean and coastal resources and ecosystems. This RFP meets not only their strategic plan objectives, but also specifically advances the research priorities of OPC's recent first in the nation statewide microplastic strategy, as well as the as, as well as their partnership with the NOAA Marine Debris Program and their 2018 to 2024 California Ocean Litter Prevention Strategy. And if you'd like to learn more about the Ocean Protection Council, um, their strategic plan objectives, as well as the, their two strategies I mentioned here, uh, Madeline will also drop those links in the chat for you. All right, so first up is um, eligibility. So eligible applicants for this opportunity include public agencies, tribes, tribal governments, public or private universities, nonprofit corporations, or private entities subject to public resources code section 35650. Um, so, PIs and collaborators outside of, or out of the state of California are eligible, but the projects must benefit the state of California and California applicants will be highly prioritized. And so um, 
applicants may submit more than one LOI or MFO proposal, um, and which means that PIs, you know, you can be listed as co-PIs on other projects. This will not be looked negatively, um, but be sure that your time allotted to each makes sense. You're not overextending yourself as if both were to get, or if multiple projects were to be funded. So for the award information, these requests for proposals seek to increase the understanding and management of environmental microplastic contamination through two research calls, which I'll touch on in detail in just a moment. These projects can be up to two years in duration, and the anticipated start date is October 1st of this year. No matching funds will be required for this opportunity. However, we do encourage that you um, point out related research and collaborations that would complement your proposal. All right, so the uh, award information and research priorities are split into two different calls. Um, one, call one, is the improved understanding of aquatic microplastic contamination sources and ecological sensitivity. We anticipate funding three to six projects, ranging from $80,000 to $375,000 per project. And then the second call, microplastic removal efficacy of low impact development, or LID, and their structural best management practices. And we anticipate funding one to two projects ranging from $200,000 to $500,000 per project. Um, I'll now go into more detail on the research priorities for call one. Um, this competitive call for projects relates to the fate, transport, source attribution, and or assessment of environmental effects caused by microplastics that enter state surface waters and the marine environment. Projects should be capable of informing management action to address and prevent microplastic pollution in the aquatic environment and or assessing microplastic effects. Priority projects related to this call include, but are not limited to, investigations of microplastic contamination from specific sources quantified in the environment or ambient waters. And these sources may include agricultural microplastic contamination, uh, aerial sources such as clothing dryers, wildfires, uh, industrial discharges, uh, including plastic production, recycling, composting, as well as bioplastic production facilities. Um, as well as uh, the environmentally relevant microplastic exposure effects and thresholds, including bioavailability of microplastic morphologies and associated chemicals to evaluate hazards and dose response relationships on marine organisms, endangered and threatened species, as well as associated human health impacts to inform and refine microplastic risk assessments. The second call, uh, research call two, uh, mi microplastic removal efficacy of low impact development, structural best management practices. Um, our projects, these projects must provide tangible recommendations for effective low impact development design, operations, and management strategies. And so, some, but not all, of the things that this call seeks to address are determining specific locations and factors that have the highest potential to reduce microplastic loading into the environment evaluating um, man best management practices, including the evaluation of soil conditions, bioretention, effects on biota, as well as design factors to inform operations and management, evaluate the effects of microplastic polymer size and shape on the efficacy of these um, best management practices for microplastic interception, and um, investigating the retention of microplastics and infiltration best management practices and identify maintenance steps to maximize performance during its design life. Again, um, you can read the full um, research priorities on the RFP webpage. So I'm gonna take a moment to stop there and see if there are any questions so far on the award information, eligibility, or the research priorities. Um, and then coming up next, uh, we will talk more about um, the letter of intent components, full, post, po full proposal components, and evaluation and selection criteria. But let's see if there are any questions. All right, so I see we have a couple. All right, so it says, um, at present, there's not a template for the formatting of the proposal. Will there be one provided? Um, so if you do look, um, 
at the RFP website, we provide minimal guidelines such as like font size and page limit um, and an order of, of which the components um, are required. And so that's kind of our, for lack of a better word, template. Um, but no, no, nothing will be provided other than that. Um, but we would prefer if you follow those guidelines and, and stick to that order, that would be preferred, yes. And then we have another question here. Are projects which span the US-Mexico border eligible for funding? So like I said, um, applicants um, who aren't located in California are eligible, but again, the project must benefit the state of California because these are um, you know, federal funds and taxpayer state funds dollars that need to go towards the state of California um, and California um, applicants will definitely be highly prioritized. If you are collaborating, we are again always going to promote collaboration and partnerships. Um, if you have a more specific question on that, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can try to best answer that. Um, next, uh, is there a limit to a number of people involved in all one number of sustained activities required? Is there a priority to title one youth participation? Let me see, is there a limit to the number of people involved? So like the amount of partners and collaborators, um, I'm not entirely sure of that question. Um, if anyone of my team has a better understanding or a better answer, I'll, I'll, I'll open the floor. And I see um, our assistant director might be typing an answer to you. So that, thank you, Rose. Yeah, we can see what Rose says. Um, let me on that. Um, as for the second part of that question, those are pri priority to title and youth participation. Um, we will touch on this a little bit further in the presentation, but um, we do have an emphasis on community engagement, especially a more diversity, equity, inclusion piece to this. So um, as one way of including, you know, title one youth that that might be a very good way, uh, but it also it depends on how it ties into your project. Um, so uh, we can touch a little bit more on that as, as uh, in just a second. Okay, can you please explain prioritizing California researchers? Do I have a chance as an international researcher? Um, so I'll, I'll try to touch on this, but I, I will defer to anyone else on my team to be a little clearer. But um, like I said, because of the funding sources, we need to prioritize Californians and Cal research being done in California, benefiting California. Um, as an international researcher, if you are um, maybe being partnering with a California institution, that might be a way to get around that. Um, or um, perhaps sub-awarding in some way, um, though I know it can get really tricky. Um, so I would advise you to maybe reach out specifically and we could try to help answer Anya, yeah, uh, if I may, um, primarily looking potentially to Rose and California Sea Grant, I know that part of the federal funds that are um, funding the solicitation are limited in that they cannot extend to international entities, and, um, and the state of California has a similar limitation, and so I do look to Rose as far as the ability, um, if that also extends, you know, to subcontracts, uh, you know, with, within um, an application and that and that will determine essentially how far outside of U.S. borders that this can extend. That is correct. We would not be um, allowed to award our federal funds to an international entity. So the funds would need to um, stay stateside. If they were collaborating and not receiving funds, um, that would be possible. So we would have to hear more about what is being proposed. Great, thank you very much, both of you. Um, let's see. 
um, the research strategy included monitoring of microplastics in example fish, would that fall under any of the two calls? Um, it sounds like it, uh, definitely um, highly recommend going back and reading through specifically all the um, priorities listed in the RFP. Um, but yes, I think, yeah, again, we're prioritizing researching, you know, how to how to manage microplastics and, and its effects. And I'll chime in, Tanya, very briefly um, mm -hmm. regarding monitoring of microplastics, you know, in, in specific endpoints. Um, I do believe that would fall under the call uh, research call one, looking at as if there is like an actual source um, or pollution classification, you know, of what is being monitored. Um, I could see that certainly being falling under uh, research call one, but this is intended to be fairly broad and open. Oh, right. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Um, really quick, can I check how we are doing on time? Um, we have about four minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so with studies focused on source reduction of single-use plastic items that are precursors to microplastic through degradation be eligible or would that topic be too removed? That's a great question. I think we're looking for a little more specifically on managing microplastics, um, though we agree with you that the source reduction is um, a huge component. Um, it can definitely come as maybe a smaller component of the of the project, but I think we're trying to uh, prioritize um, the effects or how to manage microplastics in the environment. Uh, specifically. And uh, Caitlin, if you have anything else to add to that, I would appreciate. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, chime in and that Daniel, I, I do, I do believe um, just rereading your question, I'd say yes, and that we do recommend that, uh, rec excuse me, recognize the fragmentation of larger plastics into microplastics are certainly one of the largest causes of, of least known causes of microplastics in the ambient, um, ambient waters and environment. So I would um, I would not deter you know such a research topic just ensuring it has a clear linkage to studying microplastics. Okay, and then um, there is a part of call one. Secret is interested in funding proposals that deal with microplastic morphologies and associated chemicals. So, would a research project that focused on the effects of a chemical that has been linked to microplastics be applicable for this fellowship or uh, research funding? Um, Caitlin, I might have to defer to you on this one as well. On, on this question, um, I, I do believe this is a clear yes. Okay, great. Okay. Um, well, maybe we'll take one more and then um, we're going to move on and we can always come back to these. But the next one is um, under nine. Okay, I see that this next question is we might actually touch on later in the uh, in the presentation. So maybe that'll be a good transition and I'm going to go ahead and, and move on and um, we will definitely have time at the end to answer the rest of these. But thank you. All right. All right, so this is an overview of all the key dates and deadlines for this opportunity. Um, so March 24th of this year will be when the letter of intent is due in EC Grant, which is our online uh, submission portal. And then around April 7th, approximately, you will receive responses, um, whether we encourage or discourage you to submit a full proposal. And then for those who submitted an, a letter of intent, you will get the um, details to attend an application webinar, which will be held on April 13th, um, that will kind of go over all the steps needed and the requirements to then submit a full proposal. And then those full proposals will be due in May on May 15th, again, in the EC Grant online submission portal. And so um, only those who submit a letter of intent will be eligible to submit a full proposal. 
And then you can expect a notification of your funding status um, around July. Those projects will then be brought to the August Ocean Protection Council meeting. And then we anticipate projects to begin October 1st and then um, end around September 30th of 2025. All right, so um, the letter of intent is required and must be submitted by March 24th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time through the EC Grant online portal, which will be a combination of questions as well as a, your narrative file upload. And so the components of the letter of intent are, um, again, your name, uh, affiliation, contact information, the statement of which call research call your um, project addresses, the title of your project, uh, approximate funding to be requested, any CEQA permits required, um, and then we'll also ask if you give us the permission to share your contact information only with other PIs. If we find um, two or more LOIs are very similar, we might want to suggest collaboration. Um, and then um, as well as we are re requiring um, you list three reviewers that um, have no conflict of interest with, your, with you um, that have the expertise to review your proposal because we do go through an external review process and that will help us a lot. Um, in addition, you know, you have the, their narrative, which will um, include your, your, your focal topic, these specific research questions to be addressed, uh, how the proposed work will advance the research priorities of the solicitation, the proposed study design and approach, uh, any impacts and or engagement with impacted communities, you know, if you've already thought, thought that through or if applicable, as well as um, proposed data analysis and um, anticipated management applications. And then um, our program managers will review each letter of intent to determine whether it is responsive to the goals and priorities of this funding opportunity. And then applicants um, will either be encouraged or discouraged to submit a full proposal. And those who are encouraged um, will, or those letters that will be encouraged will demonstrate relevance to the research priorities of the solicitation, clearly articulate the problem being addressed or problems being addressed and how the project advances existing microplastic research and understanding and will sufficiently inform microplastic management recommendations. Those that might be discouraged will not clearly demonstrate how their work fulfills the research priorities, will lack a clear connection to management or policy, meaning it might not be decision maker relevant, um, or is redundant or duplicative of past work. And um, again, that being said, anyone who submits a letter of intent is eligible to submit a full proposal. All right, so for the full proposals, um, those will be due May 15th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, again, through the EC Grant online portal, which opens us up questions, forms, and file uploads. The components of the full proposal are a cover page signed by your institution, a project summary, a project narrative, which will be um, a max of 12 pages, including um, the introduction and background, project objectives, approach or plan of work, outcomes and deliverables, a project timeline, a community engagement in Dadesia statement, as well as um, references, CVs, and support letters that will not count toward that 12 page limit. And um, because um, I told you we'd talk about this briefly, um, the community engagement and um, diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and accessibility are a key component to, to these um, priorities. Um, I've listed a couple examples here of what that might look like. And so example of relevant activities are broadening the participation of underrepresented groups and or early career researchers, guided research experiences and mentorship to students, supporting research programs with minority serving institutions, partnering with local community-based organizations, tribes, impacted communities uh, to inform the proposed research design and or locations. And so um, to touch on that point earlier about the Title IX schools, if it fits in with your proposal, um, yes, we definitely um, will prioritize 
some of these types of um, community engagement and diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, accessibility components. All right, so um, the additional uh, full proposal components, um, aside from the cover page, product summary, and product narrative, you will also have uh, a budget narrative, your current and pending support, a data management plan, an environmental compliance questionnaire, um, a California Environmental Quality Act compliance uh, questionnaire, um, an accessibility plan, as well as an optional demographics questionnaire. And just to note here that there, we, we do provide you an Excel budget workbook that's available to help support the preparation of your budget and um, a couple other of these application components, such as your cover page, your current and pending support, um, as well as your timeline. And so all full proposals will be reviewed by an outside panel of technical experts. And so to be funded, your research must be consistent with the missions of California Sea Grant and the Ocean Protection Council, um, be consistent with this request for proposals, and be a microplastic-based project likely to yield results capable of informing management action to address microplastic contamination in California. And so the evaluation criteria will include um, evaluation of your project rationale, your relevance and utilization, the scientific merit and innovativeness, community engagement and your diversity, equity, inclusion, justice and accessibility components, um, the qualification of the PIs, as well as your project costs and justification. And of course, you can read more into this evaluation criteria um, from the request for proposal on our website. Um, and then the selection of proposals for funding shall occur in rank order unless the proposal is justified to be selected out of rank order based on uh, these following factors, um, the availability of funding, the balance or distribution of funds, whether that be geographically, the type of institution, the type of partners, research priority or project types, um, the duplication of other projects funded or considered for funding by California Secret and the Ocean Protection Council, uh, program priorities and policy factors, applicants' prior award performance, um, as well as partnerships with participation of diverse groups, mentors, and underrepresented communities. All right, so we're back to another question break um, of things that we've covered so far. So the timeline, the uh, letter of intent components, full proposal components, evaluation or selection criteria. And we can also see if we can get some of those um, earlier remaining questions. Um, and then after this, we will go into um, a little demo of how to apply via EC grant. Um, so let's go back and look at the Q&A. Okay, so I have a question here. Uh, given California's perspectives on micro or nanoplastic, is research, um, are there any specific types of projects which are more in line with the interests in the funding grant, for example, exposure versus hazard-based testing? So um, again, I, like Caitlin mentioned, um, the intent is to have this be very broad. Um, I would, again, recommend just going and reading um, the full RFP so you fully understand um, what our priorities and what we're trying to address are. And so as long as you can make a good case for your um, project, um, we have purposely left it broad uh, to get a whole um, variety of different types of projects um, proposed. Let's see. Um, in the RFP, there is mention of the possibility of being introduced to other researchers who may benefit from collaborating at the LOI stage. Should we articulate what kinds of partnerships would be attractive to us as applicants? Um, so I think this is actually meant for um, in case we have duplicative efforts or similar efforts in the, at the LOI stage, um, rather than choosing one over the other, we would like to put you in contact with each other to perhaps partner. Um, but if I'm mistaken that anyone on my team would like to clarify or um, or elaborate any further on that. Um, not hearing anything, I think I got it right. Um, so I don't think there's a necessarily a need for you to explain that, but um, might be nice if you haven't necessarily made those partnerships yet, you can kind of explain like we, um, 
we uh, plan to reach out to these types of partnerships um, for the specific specific project. And so not necessarily um, banking on that we will make those partnerships for you with the, within the LOI process, but that you are thinking of collaborating with these types of um, entities anyway. I think that would probably make a strong um, letter of intent. Uh, are projects focused on inland waters such as lakes eligible for this funding? Uh, I see that Caitlin is typing an answer so we can see what she says, but um, I would assume yes. Um, microplastics definitely are not only in the marine environment. So yes. Are we able as a foundation to just focus on the nurdle pollution? So um, uh, from my understanding, I believe nurdle is classified as a microplastic. So I, I would think that would definitely qualify. Would a study investigating the public's role in emissions, microplastic management, and reduction be eligible for funding? I might have to defer to Caitlin again on this one. Caitlin? Honey, is this uh, to Soma Bar Barson? Yes. If you if you would like, I can begin uh, typing as many answers as I can. If you want to go through uh, proposal content ones, I'll go through and begin typing, and we can um, maybe if there's more application specific questions, you can answer live. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to move past a couple of those eligibility ones. Um, Uh, please clarify the deadlines of March 24th and March 28th. Um, oh, apologies. If there was a March, I believe the uh, letters of intent are due March 24th. Um, and if there was a 28th on there, might have been a typo. <laughs> so there was a typo on the second slide of the full proposal component. So it mistakenly said March 28th. So the letters of intent are due March 24th and the full proposals are due May 15th as it states in our RFP. So apologies for that um, slide mistake and please go based on the RFP. That is always the truth. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, let me see. For research perspectives, are there specific data gaps that are more good? Okay, we kind of already touched on that. Okay, so I'm actually not seeing any more um, application-related questions. I can verbalize a couple of answers that we typed in for you, Tanya, if that's okay. That would okay. be great. That would be great. Thank you, Leon. So there was one question of whether we will provide the links in the chat to attendees. And in fact, all of the links that have been shared in the chat today are also embedded in our request for proposals webpage that's been shared. So um, we encourage you to visit that to find any of those resources that you're interested in. Um, there might've been one more. Uh, there was a question about the accessibility plan, whether that is applicable to the letter of intent and as well as the full proposal. So the accessibility plan is only required with the full proposal and it would need to be implemented for any reports, deliverables and communications associated with your project if you are selected for funding. So I hope that answers that question, but if you have a follow-up one, please feel free to put it in the Q&A function. And I think that's, that's it. Okay, and then we can go ahead and move on um, and then we'll, don't worry, we'll have more time for questions at the end. All right, so um, before I wrap up, and again, open it back up for questions, I'm gonna walk through how to use our EC Grant um, online portal to submit all of your application materials. Um, and so I think Madeline will also drop that link in the chat for you, which again, can also be found on our RFP. Uh, but here is a screenshot of the login page. It gives you an option to either log in with your existing account information, if you've ever created an account with us before, 
um, or to register if you have not yet. And so for those who are registering for the first time, you'll hit the register tab, um, provide your first name, last name, affiliation, and then it will walk you through a stepwise process to create the account and set up a password. Um, then you will receive an email once the account has been set up. And if you don't receive an email, please make sure you check your spam folder or uh, email us and we can help figure that out. And then once you log in, you will see under the current tasks tab on the left, it will show you um, all the available California Sea Grant opportunities. So not just this microplastic research program, but um, any that we are having, any, any funding opportunity that we have open. Um, but you will scroll through and find the um, microplastics research program RFP, and you can click the blue add proposal button on the right. Um, you'll then need to enter a project title to begin, and this can be updated later on, so you can uh, edit it, but for when you first start, you have to put in a title. And then um, the next page will show you all the requirements needed to submit. And since this is the first stage, um, the letter of intent, there's not too many things, but of course, um, for the whole world of stage, you'll have a longer list there. Uh, but you can navigate through all the LOI components using this left sidebar. And then uh, every option with a red dot needs to be filled out. And um, when each section is complete, you'll check this mark as complete box, um, and then they will turn green. And then um, you'll have the option to add collaborators um, using this button in the top right, which can allow multiple people to help fill out the application. So they'll go through the process of creating their own login, but they have access to this um, application and can help fill it out. And then um, very last but important step is to make sure that you go down uh, to the submission preview tab and double check that everything is complete and accurate and all the dots are green, not red, that you filled everything out. And then you can click the sub submit button to submit your proposal. And if you're working with multiple collaborators, they will also be notified that you submitted. And then um, back in the main dashboard, you will just see that you have an in-progress proposal. And this is where you can go ahead and edit until you actually submit. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, only applicants who submit a letter of intent will be eligible to submit a full proposal. And so the applicants who submitted a letter of intent will then see the full proposal option on this dashboard and will go through the same process to fill out those items um, and submit their pro full proposal. Um, all right, so that is kind of all I have for you. Um, we can go ahead and take any remaining questions. Um, and as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and uh, will be linked on our website in the next few days. And um, we encourage you to monitor our website for any updates rel relating to this funding opportunity. Um, and so uh, let's see if there's any other questions. All right, so is there a template for the letter of intent? Um, no, there's no template, but we do try, um, again, to list just our um, formats uh, that we prefer. So like the font size and the page limit, um, and again, the order in which we would like to see things come. So um, no a template, but there should be a lot of instructions. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And then there is a last question here. Um, I have a green engine for maritime applications aiming to capture ocean debris and plastic starting with North Pacific garbage patch in order to recycle into value-added products attributing to circular economy. And I see Caitlin is already answering that, so I'm gonna go ahead and let her answer that um, and she can come off and uh, explain her answer to the group. And uh, there's a few, I think there's just more uh, eligibility questions, so. I will, um, I'll let Caitlin answer those that she's typing. And when you're ready, Caitlin, you can verbalize those answers for the rest of the group as well. And then um, 
If there are no more questions, um, again, we just encourage you to visit our website for any updates and for the full um, RFP. There on the screen, you can see uh, contact information for the proposal and budget questions. And you can also sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on any information from California Sea Grant, uh, which I think Madeline will post or has already posted for you. And coming off mute, uh, just very generally, um, mm -hmm. projects may be eligible, uh, very largely if it addresses the topics that are listed in bold under the two research calls. Again, they're very broad topics um, relating to, excuse me as I pull this, is uh, related to both the investigation of microplastic contamination from specific sources, um, potentially pathways quantified in the environment and or ambient waters. Uh, this could also, and then the second um, under research call one, looking and evaluating environmentally relevant microplastic exposure effects and or thresholds that can include um, either exposure concentrations or evaluating hazards and dose re response relationships. And so I do um, encourage those who have those more specific questions um, to look at the language, although as, as Tony had mentioned, although these were drafted to be very, very broad. Um, and second, the call relating to microplastic removal efficacy of low, low impact development, stru structural best management practices. Um, largely under research call one, I'll just emphasize that projects should be capable of informing management action, whether it be to address and prevent microplastic pollution in the aquatic environment and or assessing microplastic effects. So those are the large two categories I, I encourage uh, potential applicants to be thinking through their project proposals. Um, in those two lenses of addressing and preventing microplastic pollution or assessing microplastic effects. Uh, and last but not least, of course, is ensuring that projects do benefit the state of California. Of course, there could be uh, contributing to a larger body of research and uh, scientific literature, but importantly, consideration of California relevant species and or ecosystems. Um, so being very careful with that geographic scope as well as of the research proposals. And as Tony had mentioned earlier, that is largely due to the source of our funding. It's um, both between NOAA federal funds, but also the California uh, specific state funds. Excellent. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, so I see we have one last question here. Um, an environmental consulting company, um, would this qualify? So um, if you're in California and you're eligible to receive federal and state funds, I think so, but if you're, I, there might be some nuance with a private entity. Um, so I don't know if, if Rose or, or Caitlin has more, or Leon has any more um, information on that one. It looks like Caitlin's typing an answer. Um, you would not be given priority as a candidate, but again, um, what Tanya just said about um, benefiting California and being in California, that would get priority, not, so specific, not specifically that you're an environmental consulting company and the overall proposal would be evaluated based on the evalu evaluation criteria that Tanya presented in that slide. Thank you, Russ. And Caitlin. Uh, Rose, would it be important to note, um, for example, a for-profit company? I'm not sure if most environmental consulting firms are considered for-profit. Um, yeah, so if you are a for-profit when building your budget, since these are public assistant funds, um, the federal funds and the state public funds, uh, you would not be allowed to include profit within your budgets. So that's something to keep in mind um, when you're when you're preparing your proposal. Awesome. Thank you all. We will stick around if there's any lingering questions, but um, if not, you, again, uh, you have our contact information and the website is the best form of information. So um, you are free to go, but uh, we'll stick around if there's any other questions. So thank you very much for joining today.
Anya, last minute question came in. Um, yes, like so got it. Yeah, I'd say same. Um, same clarification regarding um, if it's if it has ability to investigate specific um, environmental sources of microplastics. Excuse me, not environmental sources, but sources of microplastics in the environment and aquatic ecosystems. Um, but again, going back to the two pronged under research call one, I would say ensuring it can form management action, which Soma, your question does seem to be directed in that in that. Um, under that topic, um, and or again investigating more the actual microplastic effects. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, okay, so Kevin is asking: I'm at a university. Does the LOI application need to come from our research affairs office or from me as the PI? Um, the letter of intent does not, but the full proposal would need to go through your institution. I don't know if that's the research affairs office specifically, but yes, it would need to go through your institution. The letter of intent, I believe, is just, um, just from the PI. But let me just add real quick, Tanya, um, mm -hmm. Kevin, it would, you'll have to check with your university policy. Most universities don't require the LOI to go through the university, but there could be some that have a policy that do. So I would just double check um, on that, but we would not require it at the LOI stage. Great point. Thanks for that, Rose. And Tanya, there was, an, there was another uh, comment about not being able to apply as a for-profit. I think the nuance there is that you can apply if you are at a for-profit institution, but you must be able to demonstrate that you will not profit from these research funds. Yes, yes. Thanks, Leon. All right, so what assessing tap water or drinking water support potential exposure concentrations for call one? Okay, I see Caitlin's on it. And I will type an answer, Sarah, but speaking is a little faster. Um, this is very similar to inland waters where our funding source does um, prioritize coastal water quality and downstream coastal ocean um, potential ecosystems um, and connect connectivity of, of some degree. Although recognizing that drinking water um, could include uh, looking at drinking water sources. And so that that could be, again, that connection to coastal watersheds. Um, but tap water, I, I would be hesitant in um, applying that to this funding source. So excuse me as I verbalize again, uh, tap water versus a uh, drinking water source, you know, physically in the environment, certainly two different matrices. I agree. Thanks, Caitlin. We still have some folks on the line. We still have some time. So again, we will stay if there's any other questions, but if not, thank you so much for joining. Oh, you're so welcome, Andrew, of course. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> oh. 
All right, I think we could call this a wrap. So thank you, Caitlin, and the rest of my team. Appreciate that you are here. Um, I think we can get 10 minutes back. <laughs>